So whenever you're looking at pride and humility, there are basically two mistakes that you can make. The first mistake is you overestimate the Lord's weakness. And you look at yourself and you think, oh, I'm such a piece of trash. I'm so bad. I'm so awful. I can't do anything. And you just kind of fall into this weak, pathetic victim mentality. That's exactly where the devil wants you. That's a vice called despair. On the other side of that, you look at the good things in you. You look at your strengths, your power, and all of that. And you overestimate your own goodness. And that is what pride is. And that is the sin of Lucifer. And according to Augustine, that is the sin that makes angels into demons. So if we want to know how to behave in an authentically humble and Christian manner, we have to end up somewhere in between. The two mistakes we cannot make are one, overestimating our own power, that's pride, and two, underestimating the Lord's power, that's despair, that's what's going to make you into a victim and make you really pretty pathetic as a man. So those are the two vices we have to avoid. So what we have to do is cultivate the virtue of true humility. Humility is defined as the virtue whereby a man is willing to live in accordance with the truth. Well, what is the truth? The truth is revealed to us by Jesus Christ. He says, without me, you can do nothing. And that's true. He's not being hyperbolic. He's not being exaggerative. All he's noting is that without either the natural or the supernatural aid of God, you would be incapable of doing anything. Without God sustaining you in being right now, you wouldn't even exist. So it is true that without God, you can do nothing. God sustains things in being the same way that light is sustained in the air. As soon as you flip the switch, the light goes out. So in order for you to exist right now, right now, God has to be sustaining you in being. In order for you to act, God has to be guiding you and helping you in that act. So this is the root of humility. The truth that Jesus Christ reveals to us that without him, we can do nothing. So whenever the saints call themselves wretchedness, whenever the saints call themselves nothing, whenever the saints who are great and powerful call themselves small and weak, what they're doing is recognizing that without the Lord, they could do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Meditation on that point will quickly make you humble. You compare God's greatness and his power to your weakness and nothingness, and you will quickly see that you're not as great as you once thought you were. Okay, that is how you start with humility. That's the first thing that you have to do. Now, the next thing that you have to do is recognize that your sins, your defects, your faults, your deformities come from yourself. All that is good in you comes from God. All that is evil in you, all that is deformed and vicious, comes from yourself. It comes from you. So whenever you're looking at your past actions, you can see your good actions as authored primarily by God. And you can give him thanks for giving you the graces and the helps that you needed to accomplish those acts. And whenever you look at your sins and you look at your vices, your defects, your failings, you can see that as your own activity apart from God's activity. So whenever the saints call themselves evil and wretched and all these things, they're recognizing what's in them and from them. And whenever they talk about their past good deeds and the magnificent things that they do, like St. Paul, who says he worked harder than the other 12 apostles, what they're doing is recognizing God's activity within them. So this is the key. And this is how you overcome the sort of dejection and littleness and false humility. And this is how you avoid becoming proud, even if you're doing great and magnificent things. You have to recognize that what is in you and from you is what humility is about. Your sins, your defects, your shortcomings. And what is in you and from God is not regulated by humility per se, but it's regulated by a virtue called magnanimity. And what is magnanimity? Magnanimity is a virtue whereby a man seeks fitting honors. Yes, there is a virtue that makes men seek honors, and it's not proud. Why? Well, because God has given each of us talents. He's given each of us gifts, and he views those things as an investment into us. So in order for us to make good on the Lord's investment, we have to use the talents, use the pounds, use the gifts that he has given us well, we have to employ the gifts that God has given us in his 
service. God is not foolish, and he wants us to take advantage of the gifts that he has given us. So this is what you do if you want to avoid being proud and also want to avoid the victim mentality. You have to look at your own sins, your own shortcomings, take those to the Lord, confess them, and say, this is where I am weak. This is me, Lord. This is what I am without you. Then look at the gifts that God has given you and figure out how you can use those to better serve his kingdom. That is the virtue of magnanimity. That's the virtue that allows you to set goals that are good for you and good for other people and pursue them in holiness. And if you enjoyed that and you would like to schedule a call one-on-one -on -one with me to see how I could help you, for a limited time, I'm getting to know my audience better, so you can click on the link in the description and schedule a call with me. Peace.